Okay, so we just got back from Boston where we're doing a bunch of quality control on the Nexus saxophones. We're doing another round of quality control. What that means essentially is I'm actually playing every single saxophone and Jack is essentially setting up every single saxophone himself. And because of that, we're finding there's a lot of demand for these saxophones. So every month I've been going up and we've been doing another round of quality control. And with this most recent trip, we thought it would be cool to actually show you guys the process of Jack building one of these Nexus saxophones. And so we're actually gonna show you guys step by step Jack's process putting together one of these saxophones. One of the things that he actually does is he weighs it on a scale when he's all done because we've been making sure that every saxophone is actually as light or lighter than a Selmer Mark VI, which I don't think has been done before. To our knowledge, no new saxophone company is actually making saxophones lighter than a Mark VI. But all in all, Jack's process is just really cool to see, so we hope you guys dig checking this out. If you want to know anything more about these saxophones, you can check that out at www.nexussaxophones.com. Currently, we're sold out of our supply of saxophones for May, but we are taking a few more orders on the Nexus Select and the Nexus One for June 1st shipment. There are a bunch of people who have been asking where you can try a Nexus saxophone. We are starting to have some dealers carry the saxophone, but what's really cool about working direct with us is that you can actually order the saxophone, have it mailed to your doorstep, and we actually have a return policy. So you can try out the horn, make sure that it's okay for you. And if you decide that you don't actually like it, you can ship it back and all you have to do is just pay a small restocking fee. So without any further ado, let's watch this step-by-step -step process of Jack putting together a saxophone. So what are you doing first here? <laughs> well, I have a very specific methodology in terms of what goes on where so I can check everything, you know, and not have to redo it right. uh, at any point. I'm just checking to make sure everything is mm. nice and tight. We've got freedom of motion across the, uh, the whole key there. And, you know, just adding a little bit of really high viscosity oil so it's going to last a really long time because we want these keys to remain quiet, which is always a problem, right? I'm sure you've had that experience where you're recording and all you can hear is your own saxophone keys clicking on the mic, right? Right, yeah. Putting these keys on, you see how I can move that? Right. That sucks. We don't want that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to swedge that key, which is a way of basically tightening it down on the rod so that mm -hmm. it's not going to have that little wiggle in it, mm -hmm. which is really important because you look, you put a lot of pressure. It's a lot of leverage on these lower keys because you just like look at how long this key is and where you're putting your finger. And most mm -hmm. people, right? I don't know if you're one of these people, but when they play low C, they tend to just like mash it down. Right. So we want to make sure that we've got a really, really tight tolerance on that key in particular mm -hmm. so it doesn't end up shifting and creating a leak. So you see, mm -hmm. totally gone now. Okay. So somebody's going to be very happy with that. And here I'm just checking to make sure that it's still free, like it's not going to bind up or feel sluggish now that we have it as tight as we have it. Right. But you can see now there's, there's absolutely zero motion, like I'm moving the saxophone uh -huh. <laughs> before the key moves itself. Right. So what I'm using here is like a really, really heavy synthetic, basically automotive grease, <laughs> because we want to prevent wear down the line so somebody doesn't have to deal with that uh -huh. anytime soon. So I've heard of, of one thing that uh, 
Zach's text will will uh, check on is is just how much like the horn pops when you just put down the keys. Is uh -huh. there is there validity to that? Uh, y yes and no. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting question. Yeah, mm -hmm. I even know of um, one person that doesn't. So you know, we use the light to go through the horn to right. simulate where the air might be coming out from underneath the pads. And I right. know one person that actually doesn't use that uh, and just like listens to the uh, instrument to right. see if it's making that popping sound. Right. Um, that's a valid test, but it's only going to give you some of the information, right? Uh, because some saxophones, believe it or not, like they'll they'll sound amazing, but then you check them and they still can be leaking. Right. So it also depends a lot on your finger pressure. And uh, like as saxophone players, like we, we love to like sit in the section and go like, Right. I mean, I don't know why it's just like right. therapeutic yeah. just yeah. to do that over and over again. Um, mm. But typically, we're pressing maybe harder than we would when we're actually playing. Okay. So it, it, it's it's a very uh, basic test. Like if you're mm. just going to see if like usually if it's going to make the sound, the horn will play. But it doesn't mean that it's perfect. Okay. You know, it doesn't mean that it's perfect because again, mm. there could be all sorts of mechanical issues that are being. Right. You know, uh, overcome due to gravity and, you know, gorilla grip. That, right. You know, when you really look at it under a microscope, you're going right. to see a lot of things that could end up making the horn not play right. Okay. And that's not even taking into consideration the key heights, mm -hmm. which is so important in terms of balancing response and resistance and intonation. Mm -hmm. So even mm -hmm. if everything is sealing correctly, mm -hmm. the horn still play terribly. Right. <laughs> a lot of money and, and obviously all all saxophone companies do this with their mm -hmm. artist model saxophones sure we spend a lot of money just on the materials that that we're putting together here what what are some of the factors that uh go into um you know why an artist model costs a lot more than a student model so yeah that's a really common question because you know there's obviously uh uh, a lot of uh, content out there that's comparing, you know, very inexpensive saxophones to very, right. you know, expensive saxophones. Yeah. And, you know, my take on that is, look, you know, you're, you're a good player is going to sound great on everything. But right. the question becomes, how long is that not so good saxophone uh -huh. going to end up lasting? You know, right. What, 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 how, how, how can we do this comparison 10 years from now when you've yeah. played both of those instruments? Right. So that's really what it comes down like to. Like a student model compared to an artist model. Yes. Or, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Because the one place where... You know, to to ensure because the saxophone is a very complicated instrument. I mean, look right. at all how many parts we have here, and then right. think about something like a trumpet. You know, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, there's 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 parts that are that are put together, but in terms mm -hmm. of moving parts, uh -huh. individual parts, the saxophone is much much more complicated, which is why it's a more expensive instrument than a lot of other members of the woodwind and brass family. Right. So that being said, a student model is going to be more for durability. Mm -hmm. Right, they're not going to be using a brass that has a higher copper content, mm -hmm. which typically does sound better. It has better resonance, but it's also much more expensive to manufacture because mm -hmm. of that that copper being added in. So that's right. one factor. Mm -hmm. But the other big one, which is mm -hmm. good that we're doing this, and mm -hmm. we planned a YouTube video around it, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> is in the materials. Right, that's where so many companies end up saving money, and that's why, mm -hmm. again, like when I see those particular videos i'm like yes of course it sounds mm -hmm. great out of the box but it's not going to last mm -hmm. right? right the tolerances that we're dealing with on mm -hmm. a professional model versus a student model mm -hmm. are not going to be nearly as high so all mm -hmm. this key fitting stuff like that's just probably not going to exist mm -hmm. on the lower end horns because it takes time right and time mm -hmm. costs money so that's that's the those are the two big factors you mm -hmm. know but overall it's materials mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you.
you need to clean a saxophone? And, and if so, how do you do that? Sure. So the biggest enemy of pretty much every material on the saxophone is moisture. Mm. Right. So <clears throat> everything is about getting the moisture away, especially from the, the pads, which are made mm. out of leather, but also the other materials that when we're talking about picking the materials that we want on the saxophone, we're looking for stuff that's quiet, but mm -hmm. also doesn't compress. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you take a cheap felt or something like that that could be controlling two keys hitting at the same time, and if it's mm -hmm. very compressible and of poor quality, that moisture, which is a really, really nice way of saying spit, mm -hmm. is going to end up, you know, over time crunching down, and you're going to have all sorts of leaks happening all over the horn, and you're also going to have, you know, the regulation get thrown off, but also in terms of the interior of the horn, brass is used because it's a non- ferrous metal right mm -hmm. the ferrous metal is, is steel it has iron in it so it will mm -hmm. rust that's right. why a lot of naval instruments and stuff like that are made out of brass so you don't have to worry about rust on the brass itself i mm -hmm. get calls all the time people freak out they're like i've got green spots on the back of my bell is my horn gonna have a hole in it and mm -hmm. you know that's not the case but in terms of the springs which control the actuation of the keys those are typically blue steel. Mm -hmm. So it's steel that's been heat treated in order to give it a little bit of protection against oxidation, which again, mm -hmm. nice word for rust. Um, so you, you just wanna like get as much out as possible using a swab, which mm -hmm. I always think is the best. If you're still like sticking one of those disgusting like tiger tail looking things that your middle school band director gave mm -hmm. you down right. your saxophone, you're doing yourself a huge injustice because you're actually leaving the moisture in the instrument. You're uh, absorbing okay. it and leaving it in there. Which right. is just very counterproductive. So you right. wanna get it out and then in terms of everything else, um, it's really important to have the horn disassembled and basically do what we just did here mm -hmm. once a year. Okay. Because, you know, you want to replace all the lubrication that's preventing the exposed steel parts, which mm -hmm. are holding the horn together, from creating that oxidation. Because once they start to rust, you're going to get a lot of wear and tear on the instrument. Mm -hmm. So you always want to use a swab as opposed to anything else. Something that, again, is going to get the moisture away from right. the saxophone. Yeah. If you really want to be OCD about right. it, which I am mm -hmm. all for, uh, you can also dry off the pads. You could use, okay. like you know, an old t-shirt or something mm -hmm. like that, just to like carefully compress the pad down on when you're done playing, because mm -hmm. that's just going to increase the life of the mm -hmm. leather. Okay, got it. So now we're gonna check this bad boy for some leaks. So at this stage of the game, we've made sure that all the key work is super, super tight. We've got really no play. And by really, mm -hmm. I mean absolutely no play anywhere in the key work. I've checked mm -hmm. it for leaks. And as a result of that key work being really tight, I don't see anything that needs to be addressed in that department. And also, mm -hmm. I have peace of mind, and should you as well, mm -hmm. that uh, nothing is going to move because we took mm -hmm. the time to make sure that everything is going to be nice and snug. Those pads should basically hit the same way every time going forward. Got it. Last thing we're going to do before we give this a play test, which is, of course, very, very important, is just check the key heights on the saxophone. And mm -hmm. the key heights are really what takes a good saxophone and can make it a great saxophone. I think this is where a lot of like the, the mythology, again, around serial numbers and finishes and stuff mm -hmm. comes into play because most of the time the horn just hasn't had even this basic level of adjustment done. Mm -hmm. But then this final, final thing that we're going to do here can have a huge effect because the saxophone is very, very imperfect. You know, mm -hmm. Most people out there playing the saxophone are under the impression, it's by no fault of their own, that the sound all comes out of here. Mm -hmm, right. It doesn't, except mm -hmm. for one note, just mm -hmm. the low B flat. Because what mm -hmm. we're doing here as we play is, uh, I love doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that okay. does pop. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say. Yes. Um, but what you're doing is you're sealing off the tube, mm -hmm. right? And so as you seal it off, the sound wave right, the note itself is coming out of the tone holes, the, the holes in the body of the instrument that mm -hmm. are below what you're closing. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of notes on the saxophone that are much uh, less vented mm -hmm. than others, just mm -hmm. physically looking at it. Like we look mm -hmm. at uh, the right hand here and you play an F, right? Mm -hmm. So the note, because everything is going to be sealed off ahead of that in order mm -hmm. for it to come out, is actually coming out of these two holes, mm -hmm. right? Not coming out of here, in any substantial way, it's coming out of these two holes. But what happens is when you go down one more note, we've sealed off one of those holes and we're gonna play an E. And so the only thing that's really allowing that E to escape is this key. Mm -hmm. So comparatively, this is a very well-vented note. It's gonna be easy to speak an F on the saxophone. When you go down to E, 
it gets more stuffy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, again, instead of maybe thinking a little bit more objectively of that, are going to get hung up on, oh, well, it's, you know, against this neck that's with my horn that's causing that stuffy E. Mm -hmm. But really it's because the key height of the D, which mm -hmm. is allowing the release of that note, is just mm -hmm. not high enough. Okay. So a general rule of thumb, as we're going down the instrument, what you want to see is every key height just a little bit higher than the rest, all mm -hmm. the way down to the low B flat. That's the easy way to think about it. So in terms of key heights, everything is looking good to me at this point. Again, we'll make final uh, micro adjustments as, mm -hmm. as it's getting played, which today will be by you. So the last thing we're going to do is I'm just going to adjust the tensions, mm -hmm. right? Which I like to do off of this so I can actually feel what it would feel like as a player. Mm -hmm. And one of the pet peeves I know that you have and I have is uh, a lot of modern horns, they feel very, very stiff mm -hmm. right out of the box. So we're just going to lighten everything up a little bit and try to balance every key so it feels like this horn has been played for 50 years as opposed to 20 minutes. <laughs> Feel that, feel the action on that horn. Nice. And there we have it.